but everybody knows that. You have to know about Queen and Zing of Angola. She was one of the most powerful lawyers in the history of our people, in the history of people who fought against oppression. Very powerful woman. You have to know. There's no excuse these days. Just go on your computer, go to Google, and put in Queen and Zing of Angola and read about her. And then teach your children about her. Very serious woman. And right now, if you go to per Portugal and you say Queen and Zinga, the whole street lock off. <laughs> Everything frees up. Because she was such a terrible, terrible fighter to the Europeans who came to enslave Africans and come kidnap Africans and commit war crimes against Africans. That's what happened. It was war crimes. And, and the black people who were taken away to the West were really prisoners of war. Prisoners of war. Where else? Let me, let me ask you a question. Where else do you think you can go to America right now and go take off, you know, half the American population and put them somewhere else and it's not considered an act of war? Try to do that and don't see if that's an act of war. See, some of us, we talk about this thing like it's some type of far removed thing in our history. It was an act of war, it was prisoners of war, and you got the prisoners of war trying to fight against each other. Type of sense that made. Do you imagine now that even <laughs> take take a, an Al Qaeda prisoner, right? Imagine now an Al Qaeda prisoner be captured by the French government. They say, stay right there. Then the Al Qaeda prisoner is captured by English. They say, stay right there. And an Al Qaeda prisoner is captured by the U.S. They say, stay right there. And then the Al Qaeda prisoner captured by the French looks at the other Al Qaeda who's captured by different people and says, huh, I'm better than you because my captor speaks French. <laughs> when they're all in the same situation. Imagine now you have all these houses, and this house is called Barbados. You don't even name it Barbados. A landlord named it Barbados. The landlord then name another house, Jamaica. You name another house, Ghana. You name another house, Nigeria. You name another house, Belize. You name another house, Brazil. You name another house, St. Lucia, St. Vincent. And all of these tenants in that house don't got what they need. And they're under house arrest and they're prisoners in that house. And people come together and say, you know what? Yo, we got the same landlord. Same landlord put these houses together, even named the houses. You didn't even, you didn't even name the house. And then someone come up and tell you, yo, let's all get together and have a tenants association meeting. <laughs> That's what Pan-Africanism is. Pan-Africanism says we all need to have a tenants association meeting. Because we all in these houses that we didn't craft ourselves, just by the fact that you're saying that you celebrated independence, 40 years of independence, 50 years of independence. What about your great-grandparents? What were they living under? And if your identity is based on an island, and this island is called Barbados for 200 years, you're telling me that your identity only goes 200, 300, 400 years? When black people have a 3 million year documented history? So you've got to give away 3 million years for 300 years? What type of people would do that? And then when people tell you about Africa, you say, I don't want nothing to do with that. I ain't got nothing to do with Africa. What would you say about a mango tree that feels like it ain't a mango that ain't from a mango tree? A mango says to you, you know, I'm not from this mango tree. How would you feel about that mango? How would you feel about a dog that crawls in here and says, you know what, don't call me a dog, call me a bird. You would think that dog is insane. So you got black people who look just like me. I was born in Ghana. My whole family is from Ghana. I'm from Ghana. I'm what you call a continental African. But you couldn't tell. I could be Jamaican, I could be from New York, I could be from Barbados, I could be from anywhere. That's the proof that Pan-Africanism is the only thing that makes sense because, check this, when a China man sees you, he associates you, associate you with Africa. Whether you believe it or not, when a European sees you, they associate you with Africa. So imagine now that you see a dog and you, you associate this dog with dogs and this dog is telling you, you know what, I'm a bird, I'm a cow. You would laugh at the dog and that's how everyone else would laugh at you when you say that you ain't an African. And the reason why most people say they ain't African, I have a sneaking suspicion is if those same people found out that Africa had the economy of Japan, they would be African tomorrow. I have a suspicion. 
So what they are is what you call fair weather friends. Right? They're fair weather friends. Imagine now you have a mother, because Africa is your mother, and your mother gets raped and your mother gets beat. And your mother gets used and abused. And you want to choose the side of the person who raped and, and, and abused her against your mother. And tell, and tell the whole world, as a proclamation to the world, you ain't got nothing to do with that mother. And I mean you deserve everything you're supposed to get. For real. And here's, here's the joke. You want to hear a joke? Listen to this joke. Adrian can tell you because he was just in Africa. Because a lot of people, when we talk about Africa, a lot of people say, uh, you talk about Africa all the time, you've never been to Africa. You know, well, Adrian was just in Africa. From Africa, I was just in Africa. Africa all the time. Here's a joke. When you go to Africa and you get on a plane, half the plane is full of Europeans. Same people telling you, don't have nothing to do with Africa. Africa is the jungle, Africa is this, Africa is that. But half the plane is full of Europeans doing what? <laughs> Conducting business. Because it turns out, as luck would have it, that we come from the richest continent on the planet Earth. And if you are not smart enough to understand that and link up with your mother who's been abused and raped, then you deserve the poverty that you live in. This is just a reality. You have other people giving you propaganda saying, don't go Africa, Africa's full of disease, Africa full of starving people, Africa full of people swinging on trees, Africa is... But they sit on the airplane same speed, going to Africa. Telling you that, but going to Africa. Keeping your eyes off the price. The richest continent in the world. Feels the richest. If, it, if Africa wasn't up, why so many people going over there? And then they leave you. And then they just laugh at you. They just laugh at you. The treasure is right here, but you don't want nothing to do with it because you lack the vision. And you've been miseducated to not have the vision to say that this is your birthright. Come on, Frankie. You understand? Come on, Frankie. For real. This is your birthright. And your ancestors who was taken over here never gave up being African. They never gave it up. They never said, I don't want to be African no more. Think about them. They never gave it up. It was never an official giving up of your African heritage. So just wise up. Stop, approach, and represent yourself in the world as someone with a mental illness. The mental illness is you look, at, you look in the mirror, it's like they have anorexia, right? You know the problem with people with anorexia? Even though they're bony, they look in the mirror and see that they're fat. This is a psychological disposition. You look in the mirror, you see yourself, and you don't see that you look like me. You don't see that you look like someone in a continent, a continent full of African black people. You feel like you ain't got nothing to do with that for some reason. I mean, what an interesting, can you imagine me saying I'm not a man, I'm a woman? You would laugh. That's how people laugh at you when you say, I'm not African. The whole world says, you look like an African, you walk like an African, you even talk like an African. You, you don't even realize that you talk, the way you speak English, you speak English like an African. Even Jamaica is strong, 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 because Jamaicans, a lot of Jamaicans straight from Ghana. My language is tree. In, in Jamaican dialect, you would say, me no say, right? Me no say, it's cold outside. Me no say, me no say. In my language of tree, you say, me ni say. To say, I know that. The language is there, the culture is there. You even eat the same food. Plantain, I plantain. Say, wait. So how much more convinced you need? The writing's on the wall. You want to just say it's no wall. <laughs> Not even a right. You just want to say it's no wall. How do you think the rest of the world will look at you? And then you want to say, Yo, um, I am Sir Winston, blah, blah, blah. You know, feel proud of that. You know what they call that? It's a psychological condition they call Stockholm Syndrome. Stockholm Syndrome is when people got kidnapped in a store by some criminals. They got kidnapped for a few days. 